favor. Yeah. Uh, blue is playing an aggro deck with a lot of one power creatures for one and two powers for two against into Supreme Verdicts. It's very hard for them to to successfully aggro before a Supreme Verdict. Uh, but in the post-war games, blue gets to play this tempo game plan here. Though it does look like Chioi has a pretty commanding advantage here. Yeah. Yeah, well, so what Schneider is able to do is he does have a Biden to Thassa going, and it makes all his creatures into must-answer threats. Chihoi hasn't... Like, the mono blue player tries to make it so that the blue player never gets to have Sphinx's revelation in the matchup. But right now, Chihoi does have Aetherling, which may be enough. We've come to this pretty late, and some of the build-up to this can be pretty great. There's a lot of jockeying for early position, and what's, what's, what I enjoy about watching the games here is that often... Uh, these very different strategies manifest themselves in the post-war games. And the blue-white control deck can sometimes be served by becoming very aggressive post-board because all that Mono Blue is trying to do is, you know, play a threat and protect it, make Supreme Verdict a much less effective card and try to fight it over Sphinx's Revelation. But that sometimes means the pacing of the game is really slow. And a random Aetherling, for example, Archangel Thune can be really powerful. Right. We see there... An uh, Jace Minus there, he gave Schneider Mutavolt and Tidebinder Mage. Schneider had already made his land for the turn, unfortunately, so... Oh, no, sorry, he hadn't made land. He got to play the Mutavolt, and he tapped to make, uh, to make Tidebinder. Chihoi will use the Aethling to take out Jace, then blink it out on his turn so it's back as a blocker, and go ahead and plus his own Jace. Now, Andrew still has a pretty healthy life total here, uh, I would imagine, from Last Breaths, but... Uh, it's going to be really hard for him to beat this Aether Bling. Yeah, well, once Aether's down, Mono Blue does not have tools to knock it off the table. And this is a tough spot. Aetherling all will pretty will always blank an attack an attacker of Andrews. And once the Blue Devotion player gets behind on the board like this, so many of the draws post board become so bad because your counter spells aren't helping you catch back up, and so many of your threats are are individually anemic. Yeah, once Blue White turns the corner it can be pretty hard for Mono Blue to win. Up until that point, I usually feel like, the, you know, it's like, it feels a lot like Blue's playing a Delver Secret style strategy where it's getting a one or two drop down and then just holding up counter spells to never let the control deck, you know, turn and start playing their big spells. The fact that Chihoi did set up a board where he can resolve Aetherling does show that maybe the game has gotten away from Schneider. Yeah, absolutely. And Andrew there making a desperation attack on the previous turn, trying to draw a card off that Biden. Chihoi had an Azorius trying to put the creature back on top of the deck. And it's going to be really hard for, for Andrew to recover from this. Just drawing too many cards here. He cast Divination, minus to Jace. He's drawn four cards already this turn. And we know the top card of Andrew's deck is a 2-2 a two -two for two. Yeah, tie binder go. And it seems like An Andrew knows the writing here. At this point, Chihoi is winning the race with thanks to Aetherling. And remember, Andrew doesn't have any way to interact with it outside of maybe he may have boarded in a ra some rapids if he was worried about Archangel, but he doesn't have, you know, once he starts losing the race, he doesn't have many plays available. And the Mono Blue Devotion deck is so much less streamlined in the post-board games. It's, it takes away a lot of its aggressive elements. Uh, out of necessity, it can't be the Supreme Verdict playing the game that way. So uh, it does play a much slower game. Leaves it very susceptible to things like this. All right, and there you go. Chihoi Yim moves up to six and one. Andrew Schneider down to five and two. Both these players with five wins already are into day two. Chihoi trying to get his record as high as he can, though, to maybe make, an, make a top eight. And not surprising to see Andrew off to a really strong start. Again, four rounds of legacy to start the day. Uh, a blue-red Delver aficionado, a, a deck that I think is just uh, wildly unplayable, <laughs> but... Andrew has had yeah. so much success playing it on the Open Series that I consider him to be an aberration. I've never seen anyone else win with this deck, uh, but Andrew is a, a dominant legacy player with Blue Red Delver. Yeah, and Mono Blue looks...